Oh, I got it. I just missed it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dogs on the Run. We are ready to roll today. This is the most interactive show you will see anywhere when it comes to your Browns coverage. He's Mike Karens. I'm Andy Baskin. We want to tell you how you get involved in the show. First of all, go to Skype. If you have Skype, just go right to it. Dogs on the Run. D-A-W-G-S on the Run. One big word. We'll be friends on there. We'll talk to you and we'll take care of that way. Or you can call in at 216-431-3820. If you have questions, you're a little camera shy, you don't feel like picking up the phone, why don't you hit us on Twitter at Andy underscore Baskin. Really, that's the easiest way to get involved in the program. We're excited to have you on board. This is unbelievably uh, interactive, and there are no holds barred. You can say whatever you want, folks. You can do whatever you want to say and say whatever you want to do about the Browns' loss yesterday. And we'll pick it up right there, uh, and I'll tell you about the rest of the show. But first of all, your thoughts on the game, Mike? Well, I, it's certainly, you know, from an offensive standpoint, Andy, it wasn't the offense that we thought we were going to see. I mean, it looked like the preseason offense. They told us everything was vanilla. It still looked vanilla yesterday on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they looked great against the run. I mean, the 20 yards that they gave up, that was the second lowest total in the history of the Browns football. So that's, and you go back to 1954, was the, was the least they ever gave up against the Giants. But from a defensive side of the football, Ray Horton's defense looked great. They didn't make plays, and they didn't take advantage of turnovers, and, and it cost them in a game that, as you know, with the schedule, it's a winnable game. Well, I think the hard part about it is that fans were really excited about yesterday's game. I know when we walked into the stadium yesterday, people were super pumped, yeah. and it was just like this feeling of, hey, this team is going to be a good team this year, and I have great and high expectations. But we saw holes on the offensive line. We saw a little bit of defensive secondary issues yesterday, and we saw a quarterback that didn't look like a championship quarterback. I thought he played okay in the first half, and I was really hoping that it would step it up in the second half, and Brandon Whedon didn't do that. We're expecting a lot of phone calls about that today. We're expecting to hear a lot about that today as well. Uh, we're also going to make sure that you're interactive with us today, too. So we're going to go back, and we're going to check in with Connor Kiesel. Uh, Connor, hang on a second. You can actually talk to him over here. Look, Connor That's right. Yeah. Can, how's, how's it going, guys? All right, Connor. <laughs> hey, Connor, what do you got going on back there? Got a ton of stuff on NewsNet 5 right now. A live chat allowing you to interact. And here's how you do it. You can either download our NewsNet 5 app. If you don't already have it, get that onto your mobile phone, mobile device, or go onto our website. You can watch the show and chat with the guys as you want. You can Skype us in, like they said, using dogs on the run, call in, tons of ways to interact. We want to hear what you have to say about the Browns games. We know you fans are passionate, and we know you want to tell you guys what, what you're thinking, right? That's right. All right, Connor, thank you. <laughs> we'll check back in with you in a little bit and let us know what's going on down uh, on the social media scene. Uh, we have a great show for you. I'm telling you, we have tons of yeah, stuff coming of up in this today. one. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Josh Cribbs coming up at 710. Uh, Matt Lodi is going to be talking about the Steelers. Many of you know him from the radio. Also, Garrett Downing, who used to work at Newsnet 5, now works for Ravens.com, will mm -hmm. join us a little bit later this morning. Uh, we'll talk to uh, uh, Mike Rutledge from the Streetsboro's Brownbackers. Uh, who else do we have today? We have Josh Cribbs again. Matt Wilhelm is going to join us. Matt Kenny Rhoda is going to be a regular on the program as well. Uh, Zach what else? Jackson. Zach Jackson is going to join us. We got all kinds of good stuff going on here today too. So we're going to be talking to a lot of people. We really want to talk to you. In fact, we're going to go to the phone lines right now, and we're going to talk to Wes. Hey, Wes, are you there? I'm here. Hey, Wes. All right, this is uh, Wes Yanserak, right? Close. That's me. How you doing? Good. I just want to make sure I said your name right. Uh, he's the president of the Palm Beach, Florida Browns backers. What was the scene down in Florida yesterday? I gotta, I gotta think it's really disappointing, especially with the Dolphins in your backyard. Yeah, we were uh, we were quite disappointed. Um, however, it was a, uh, I mean, it was a, it, it, we had a nice crowd. We had about a hundred people at our club watching the game, and um, it was uh, quite disappointing. I must say, it was um, a lot of a lot of questions being asked at the end of the game, and uh, you can only imagine. All right, Wes, how big was the crowd there? Uh, we had about 125 people at our club. Uh, we, we regularly get that many people. Uh, especially the first for the season opener and the game was actually on local TV here so that's was actually uh, still a pretty good crowd for us uh, what uh, what was your assessment I mean what was the big topic walking out of there was it Brandon Whedon uh, that and the play calling um, I just think my personal question and and most of the other people's question that was there was uh, why Trent Richardson only had 13 carries and Trent and um, Brandon Whedon had 53 pass attempts. Uh, you know, you, it's tough to analyze the game, you know, like that. At the same time, you're looking at it and you're like, geez, you know, we have Trent Richardson. Why is he only getting the ball uh, 13 times? And what he only he had four carries on the first 
drive and what 11 the rest of the game yep so i think that was the biggest question all right hey we appreciate your time wes thank you so much for calling in tell everybody down at the browns backers club and and uh in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach. Tell them thank you very much. We appreciate all the support. Andy, thanks for having me on. I all really appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate it. Again, we invite all the Browns backers from all around the world to call in on yeah. this show because we're excited to talk to you. I know there are folks all around the world uh, that are huge Browns fans. In fact, uh, North Pole, Alaska, there's a guy from North Pole, Alaska that flies in for all the Browns home games. <laughs> so I think that's true dedication right there. Um, you know, I, I go back to this game yesterday, and I'm still trying to figure out why they didn't go to Trent Richardson, why they didn't, you know, he seemed to establish himself early on in this game, and he was eating up yards. You were looking at nine. I mean, I'm looking at my play chart, Richardson plus nine, plus five, plus yep. six, you know, plus two, and then all of a sudden you go down six nothing, and it's like, oh, we're not doing this anymore. 15 touches for the entire game, and not only that, but how about the goal line situation? They had to call a timeout because Chris Obanaya was in there, and you're thinking, why isn't Trent Richardson going to get the football down here on the goal line? It was an almost an automatic call. There was some confusion about the, the the personnel that was in there, and they take a timeout. Then they put Richardson back in. Then they throw the football. So, you know, you're, you're, this, this is the guy who you kept out the entire preseason, Andy, for the most part, to make sure that he's completely healthy because in North Turner's offense, he's supposed to get 300 carries if this is going to be a successful year. Well, then guess what? They failed. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. If they fed you one thing and said, this is why he's staying out, this is why he's not playing season ticket holders, this is why you're not going to see him in only two preseason games, and then I'll hand him the football. If that's your horse, give the horse the ball. And like you said, it was a 6 nothing game. It was well within reach. And with the offense that we've seen, at least what we've heard of, this it, it was always in reach because this is a team that's going to throw the football. Uh, but you've got to run the ball to establish the pass. And, and they didn't do that yesterday. You gave your best back 15 touches. All right. If you want to call us, give us a call. 216-431-3820. 216-431-3820. Or on Skype, dogs on the run. And you know, what calls into question yesterday, too, is why didn't the starters play in that fourth preseason game? I, I go back, and I, you know, I was really leery of it. I was like, Brandon Whedon needs more time, yeah. especially with wide receivers that we know we're not going to see play. Um, it, Josh Gordon, you know, him not playing in yesterday's game, I think was a huge, huge hole. When you look at the Browns and you look at this team, and you're like, hey, they don't have their number one wide receiver. So what's the situation here? And you've got to be able to step up. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out a lot of the things that they did yesterday offensively because I think a lot of fans today are saying, what's the difference between the Pat Shermer run offense that we saw last mm -hmm. year and what we saw yesterday out of Norv Turner? Because it was very similar. You, I, you're talking about a quarterback that threw the ball over 50 times in yesterday's game. And, and it was such a high note going into this thing and now all of a sudden it's like, boom, you just pop the uh, the air right out of the balloon. I think the big key, and you hit on it right there, is the fact that Josh Gordon wasn't in the football game. Our our Channel 5 analyst, Reggie Rucker, I thought he had the best, he broke it down the best way he could. Travis Benjamin became Josh Gordon yesterday because right. Josh Gordon wasn't there. Travis Benjamin's a little guy, and you can't fight off man coverage because he's not built like Josh Gordon. And, and Reggie is a great wide receiver. When you, you hear this thing called hand fighting, you know, when you right. get up on a guy like this, most big guys will just swat it away and finish their route. But Travis Benjamin's small enough where you can push him and affect the route, which affects the timing with the quarterback. And all they did was they doubled up on Greg Little, and they went man on, Josh, uh, on, uh, on Travis Benjamin, and they said, Travis Benjamin's going to beat us. That, that is the bottom line. Travis Benjamin is not Josh Gordon. That is nothing against Travis Benjamin, but the Dolphins knew there was one weapon taken away from the Browns, the deep threat weapon. We talk about the ball is going to be thrown vertically under North Turner's system. You just took out his vertical threat. Everybody else are guys that are possession receivers. Devon Best, possession receiver. Greg Little, for the most part, a possession receiver, and so is Travis Benjamin. Your playmaker became your tight end, Jordan Cameron, which, you know, I think you would agree, probably along with the run defense, was the bright spot of yesterday's loss. Well, I, and there are a lot of things going on, and, um, you know, I, I'm just – I really want to get some more perspective on this thing. So uh, Josh Cribbs is hanging out at Josh's Cribs, hanging out back in the window there. Josh is on the VIP line, and you'll be a part of this show. Look at that. The fans are still cheering for you, Josh. How you doing? <laughs> hey, how you doing? We had the dog. We had everybody cheering for you, so we couldn't <laughs> hear you, Josh. How you doing? Well, you look good, I can tell you that. Uh, we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. So uh, what do you want to do, boys? Let's go. Let's, uh, this is one of the other guys that we're going to be talking about. Oh, that's Eric. 
he is going to be stressing out for the next <laughs> two and a half hours. All right, guys, I'm here. I'm uh, with you. Oh, nice. All right. Everything's good. Was it a little microphone problem or what was it, Josh? Yeah, I had I had mute on while you guys were talking before. I didn't know when I was coming in. Sorry about that, guys. You know, it's funny, Josh. My wife does the same thing to me. It's like I've got this mute button on me, and she pushes that all the time too. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, first of all, how, before we get into yesterday's game, how you doing and and how you feeling? And and I know you're probably disappointed you're not playing this year. How, yeah, I know you're trying to rehab too. What's your situation? Hundred percent to where you know scouts and coaches would like to see me. Um, you know, I, I did have some issues that I was trying to get over, but, you know, I've been training and working out every day. I have a lot of teams call. My agent told me, you know, when you go on, don't discuss the teams. You know, we want to keep everything, you know, uh, hidden. But uh, I will be, you know, joining teams uh, in the in nearby future and getting ready to get back out there on the field. All right. If you have a question for Josh, you can send it to me at Twitter, at Andy underscore Baskin, at Andy underscore Baskin. All right, Josh, what would you think of the Browns yesterday? I'm sure it was weird for you to be sitting out watching uh, not at the stadium. It was. It was really weird um, just not being a part of the team uh, after so many years. Um, you know, after, you know, I think it was just a slow start. You know, if you look at the history of the Browns, you know, we don't start fast. Even the year that we, uh, you know, we went 10 and 6, you know, we lost our first home game and then we went on a run. So uh, it's just it's just a matter of us starting slow and not being able to you know start start fast as we you know do in history you know history tells us. Josh, let's talk a little bit about a couple of sides of the football. Let's talk about your side of the football first. Uh, your your assessment of Brandon Whedon and the the offense. I mean the offensive line definitely struggled and and then without the big fella in there, Josh Gordon. Uh, obviously some of the targets were limited for some of the other guys and your playmakers, but. Uh, talk a little bit about Brandon Whedon's game yesterday and the fact they threw the ball 53 times. I don't know if they threw it 53 times in all the years you were there for any individual game. <laughs> well, let's let's get one thing, uh, you know, understood. This is an offense, a passing offense. Um, we, you come in, you have to establish a run game first for your passing game to even be effective. Um, you know, you, you said you had you had Josh Gordon down right now. We, we, we had to, you know, basically build a chemistry. You know, during practice and during uh, OTAs, during camp, you know, he had Josh Gordon there to build that chemistry. Um, we didn't have that deep ball threat. They need to develop more deep ball threat guys. Um, you have a deep ball threat guy in, in Travis Benjamin, but he's not the main guy that Brandon Whedon is used to throwing to. But uh, as, in the game yesterday, he did throw some good balls. You got to understand that the balls were well contested. He had a few drops by receivers and turnovers. And when you have that, it's hard for a quarterback to have rhythm. And not to mention the, you know, the, the SIWs, that we call it in football, the self-inflicted wounds that were, uh, you know, caused by, you know, penalties. And we can't have penalties. But Brandon Whedon's, you know, uh, overall play, you know, was pretty much average. He just needs to start fast. And, and that goes along with the offensive line, the running game, and the receivers as well. You know, you, you tend to blame a quarterback for all this offensive, you know, misdoings. When the offense is not doing good, when they're not, you know, scoring and having those powerful moments, you tend to blame the quarterback. But if you look at certain key spots when they needed to convert, when they needed to move the ball down the field, you know, there were interceptions, there were drop balls, there were uh, off-size penalties. So you can't all hang that on Brandon Wheat. Uh, Josh, when you go back and think about last year and the way they handled Brandon Whedon, and you know what we hear out here is probably a lot different than what you clearly were hearing there or what you know. Um, you know the, the thing that I hear the most is there were a lot of different people in Brandon's head last year, and that this year seems to be a little bit easier for him because it's just Norv Turner. C can you talk about that at all? I think that uh, this offense altogether. You know, it's an easier offense. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a well suits Brandon Whedon's uh, throwing style. You know, uh, it's 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 quite different than uh, Pat Shermer's offense. You know, just like you said, he doesn't have you know multiple guys. You know, telling him where to go with the football, where to throw, where he should be, where his read should be. Um, last year's team was, uh, you know, we had multiple Chiefs. You know, it was no real defined chief. You had Pat Shermer. You had, you know, an offensive consultant. You had, uh, you know, the OC. You know, so we had multiple guys in, in, in Brandon's ear. But uh, this year, you know, I think this offense will best suit Brandon to help him, you know, achieve his capabilities more, his, uh, you know, his, his style of play. All right, Josh, we are going to check in with you at uh, 742. So we'll come back to you 
at 740, but we appreciate it looking good and uh, we're wishing you the best of health and we'll talk to you a little bit later. We're glad you're doing the show with us, Josh. We appreciate All right. it. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, we'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, you know, I, look, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for the rest of the season because, oh, I, 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 you know, the thing about him and the thing that I'll always respect about him too was the time that he played here and that he had the broken feet and he had four steel plates inside his shoe that were separating his toes to let him go out there and run. So, um, you know, truly a fan favorite, truly a guy that loves the city of Cleveland, and uh, we're excited about having him on the show.